Hi friends, welcome back to my channel Where is Brittany? Before we get into this, I wanted to state a few things. If you haven't watched the preview for this video, you might want to press pause and click the link in the description and watch that clip first. Because in this video, I discuss a lot of personal things and some topics may be triggering. Please note, this was recorded 18 August 2020, prior to Jaden passing and me adopting Jada. I decided it was time to release this video and share my story. I hope you're able to gain some insight as to why I look at the world the way I do. And lastly, this is my story with my experiences. I will not argue with anyone in the comment section about my life. You will just be blocked. And that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoy. Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel, Where is Brittany? I'm Brittany and I'm coming to you from inside of my tiny home on wheels, Domino. This video is different from anything I've done before because I think it's time for me to tell you guys my story. When people come into contact with me, they say, oh, your energy is so positive and you know, you're always smiling and you walk around like, like your world is made of sunshine, unicorns and rainbows. And to be honest, that is the world that I created for myself. I created this world of happiness, sunshine, unicorns, and rainbows, and I worked really hard for this to become my reality. So today, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna let you guys into Brittany, into my life, <laughs> basically, and take you on a, a little journey from my time in the military, uh, battling depression, suffering from a gambling addiction, separating from the military, um, being completely overweight, obese, <laughs> um, going through my weight loss journey, and coming into bus life and how basically bus life has changed my life, actually. Hi everyone, I'm Brittany. This is my little fur baby Jada, and the star of this trio is Domino, my 1998 self-converted four-window short bus. I've had Dom since summer 2019, and so far I've put over 11,000 miles on my tiny little home going on solo adventures. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so you always know where is Brittany. So I've never done one of these videos before and I hope I can stay on track with everything that I'm trying to get out I didn't take notes I didn't write things down I'm just basically going to have this conversation with you guys as if I'm talking to my friends because y'all my friends right yeah so that's basically what this is um some of these things that I'm going to discuss, like I haven't, you know, really talked to my family about it. Like they're aware of some things, but, um, you know, flat out having this conversation with them, telling them certain things, like I haven't had that conversation with them. Um, so this also can be, you know, uh, uh, maybe healing for some or just a way for some of my family members to actually like take it all in and see how much I've evolved and changed from the time that I separated from the Air Force because I am <laughs> just, I don't know, like I'm a completely different Brittany. Um, or maybe I am the same Brittany that I was prior to me joining the military and it's just taken this long for me to get back to the old Brittany. So really, I guess this is a road to rediscovery of who Brittany really is, who I am. <laughs> so I think it's time for me to make some coffee. Um, the drive really wasn't that long, but this is going to be an intense conversation. And I think I might need some caffeine for that.
the coffee was smelling so freaking good like I got hungry and decided I should just go ahead and make breakfast so I have some sausage on right now and I'm gonna throw some hash browns in there shortly here's my little setup I have a two burner Coleman stove propane it's my coffee getting ready I think like three minutes have passed already so yeah make some breakfast hopefully you can hear there's the road So I'm just eating breakfast right now and it is kind of loud because the road is like right there. So I think I might walk around a bit and find a nice quiet spot by the river after I eat so we can have this conversation. But first. just brutally attacked by two bees they brought their squad and came and ruined my breakfast and they were a part of the beehive so it's not like I could ski and call a squad and have them come you know give me back up so I guess my breakfast is finished <laughs> like nervous um I mean it is my story right I should know you know how to start and you know how to have this conversation but I am kind of nervous because you know I have to go back and when I say go back like I really do have to like you know rewind and kind of revisit my past and I don't really like to revisit my past much because I do have a lot of regret. And it's easy to like put yourself, you know, back in this weird head space and it can really cause you to, you know, spiral and really get back into depression thinking about, you know, a lot of your past mistakes and everything. But I guess let's just start <laughs> okay so I'm Brittany and I live in a self-converted short bus by the name of Domino um, I built out Domino with my fiance at the time it was just him and I we worked <laughs> all through the summer in Reno heat converting Domino into um, basically like a tiny home on wheels but she isn't what she is today okay so let's start um I joined the military in 2006 and I was 18 I graduated high school in 2005 and if I would have you know talked to my younger self and said like hey Brittany you know you joined in the military, right? Or you know you joined in the Air Force, right? Myself would have been like, girl, bye. Like, no. Because anybody, if you talk to anybody like in my past, they would tell you like, I was like all this bubbly person, like 
pink's my favorite color. If glitter's the color, that's my favorite color. And nothing about Britney scream military. Um, my grandma, what she told me so many times before I left was make sure you don't lose yourself. Make sure you don't lose yourself. The military will break you down basically and build you back up into what they need you to be, what they want you to be. So remember not to lose yourself. And I remember that now, but as I progressed in rank, it was hard for me to remember myself. Um, because while you're in the military, basically you get reprogrammed. And I was blued, <laughs> not to be confused with like, you know, blue lives matter crap, but for the Air Force, our colors are blue. So I was blue in regards to the Air Force. And, um, you know, I will say during my time in the Air Force, I loved it initially. My first base was in Washington State. <laughs> I turned 21 there, met so many good people, friends forever, lifetime friends. I had a great time there, great time in uh, Sumter which is Shaw Air Force Base, had a great time there. Hey, friends, made so many friends and sisters um, at Shaw Air Force Base. But things changed <laughs> once I moved to Nellis Air Force Base, which is in Las Vegas, Nevada. During my time in Las Vegas at Nellis Air Force Base, um, I will say the change in pace was different for me. Prior to that, all the bases that I was stationed at was small medical facilities, like smaller clinics. And when I transferred to Nellis Air Force Base, I worked, I no longer worked in a clinic. I was working at this large medical center. And I will say the people, change of pace, the rules of engagement, the whole everything, all of operations just completely changed. At those smaller clinics, you felt like family and the squadron commanders or the med group commander would basically know you by name. You know, hey, you know, Airman Nusson at the time at McCord or hey, Sergeant Nusson you know, how's your dog doing? Like you really had that relationship with those, with your leadership at those different bases. But when I PCS to Nellis, it was no longer that. I became a number. I felt like a number to these people. And my whole everything when it came to the military just changed. I no longer could see myself doing 20 plus years. Like I could, could have, retired at 39 in the military if I would have stayed in. My job was medical admin, really good job. Like you could work anywhere basically in a medical center um, just as long as you weren't touching patients. And I really could see myself doing that for 20 years until I came to Nellis. People cope with stressors differently. I didn't pick up smoking cigarettes or, you know, drinking and stuff like that. And I will say a lot of military people, like that's their path. Stress, either you deal with your stress by like, you know, going to the gym hardcore or you handle your stress by drinking or smoking. And that's just, that wasn't me. So during my time in internal medicine clinic, um, I had a rough time because leadership just kept changing. The turnover was absolutely ridiculous and we just constantly kept getting new leadership in the duty section and our leadership turned into, hey, Sergeant Newson, I need you to start doing more work. I need you to take up more leadership roles because your leadership is too busy to do their job. So with that, I handled my stress by going to the casino. 
it initially started off by playing bingo. And, you know, bingo may seem, you know, really like it's a fun game. I mean, yes, bingo is fun. We learned how to play bingo young as kids. But, you know, you in Vegas, you can gamble. And so I would play bingo. I started going out playing bingo with friends. And I would have my hot chocolate with Baileys and like whipped cream. And that would be, you know, my thing. And then it no longer was bingo with friends. I would start going to bingo by myself. And then it became, well, bingo stops at a certain time. And now you have slot machines. And so I would start playing the slot machines. And so I would play slot machines, you know, with friends. We would go to the casino, have a few drinks um, and play slot machines. and. For anybody who knows how Vegas goes, you get like a card and you know, you play slots or you sit at the tables and play games and stuff and then you rack up points. And your points allow you to get like free food, hotel stays, you know, concert tickets, like all of that. Um, and so for me, it turned into, okay, well, you know, I can get points and it's me relieving stress. You get a few free drinks and then it turns into free food and free night stays and you know, all of this stuff. And basically leisure, going to the casinos to de-stress turned into a serious gambling addiction. I struggle personally with this gambling addiction I would say honestly for about two years before I allowed anyone else to know what I was going through. And I say I allowed it because when you put on your uniform, what they tell you when you put on your uniform, right before you walk through those doors to the hospital or you know wherever you work, all that extra shit, you need to leave it at the door. So if you have problems at home, you leave that shit at the door because once you walk through those office doors, you know, you cut that off and now you're no longer your first name, now you're Sergeant Newsom. And so for those two years, probably longer, you know, I struggled hardcore with the gambling addiction. Um, just putting it out there, you know, I, got my car repossessed twice um in the end when things really got bad i end up getting a roommate <laughs> and the that didn't work out basically and um end up getting evicted so that happened to me all of this was while i was in the military and i was going through you know all of these things internally and I didn't want to let anybody know I didn't want to let my friends know family know you know anything because I just felt so ashamed like how did I let my life you know spiral into something like this like I joined the military at 18 on my own I'm originally from Florida, moved from Florida to Washington State, you know, thrived there, excellent credit, you know, could go into any dealership, get a car, uh, yeah, no, I'm not putting any money down type situation. And I basically, you know, felt like I hit rock bottom is why I reached out to my leadership at the time. Sorry, it's a bug. That's why I reached out to my leadership at the time to let them know that at this point I'm struggling and I don't feel like I can no longer get out of this situation by myself. One would think that, you know, reaching out to your leadership asking for help would be a good thing, but it wasn't. My last year in the Air Force was hell for me. It was literally 
hell. Um, okay. <laughs> so it kind of sucks reliving some of this stuff because, yeah, I just don't like to go back. So, yeah, just continuing on with the story. <laughs> My last, you know, year, year and a half in the military was just terrible. Um, you know, I spoke to my leadership and instead of my leadership trying to help me, I feel like ultimately they tried to set me up to fail even more than what I already did to myself. I requested time and time again to deploy so I could leave Las Vegas. I tried to early separate so many times <laughs> that was denied by the commander multiple times um oh sorry it's an ant um i also tried to i tried to deploy they wouldn't let me deploy um i tried to go reserve so i can at least be close to my home with family who could be there to support me and I explained to my leadership the situation and basically told them being in Las Vegas is like an alcoholic working at a bar and you expect everything to be okay. Like, oh no, you'll be fine. But literally I had at the time, and I mean, I'm still struggling. I mean, an addiction is an addiction you know, a serious gambling addiction and I'm crying, sorry Jay, pouring my heart out to leadership and it just fell on deaf ears. So fast forward, my time in the military ultimately came to an end. Thank God, um, <laughs> I got out honorable discharge. Um, I received separation pay. During this time, like I struggled hard and you know, I reached out to my senator in Florida. I wrote my congresswoman in Florida to let them know that I was really struggling and that I needed, you know, help in order to get out of Las Vegas. And, you know, I will say basically everything happens for a reason. Um, because all those times that I tried to leave Las Vegas, if I would have left Las Vegas at any point in time, I would not have met Andrew, <laughs> my husband, you know? So that gambling addiction and being in Las Vegas, as much as I like to forget it ever happened, erase it from my past, my history, if I did do that, or if that was an option, I will also be erasing Andrew from that. And, you know, basically he's, he's the best thing. <laughs> he's like, you know, yeah. I don't even wanna talk about that because I don't wanna get all teary eyed and stuff like that. It's too early for that and I'm pretty sure that may come in the future. <laughs> um, yeah. So, gambling, that happened. My gambling addiction has happened. It's a part of me. I have to carry that guilt, that shame, you know, with me because my, everything changed. It was someone who was independent, didn't need nobody, you know, all of this stuff, it humbled me. <laughs> you know, it really brought me back to almost being childlike, asking for help, reaching out to my oldest sister, saying, hey, if, can I have all my money transferred to you and you give me an allowance in order for me to not you know, gamble away my money. I went through so many different things trying to 
you know, beat this gambling addiction. I went to like the, the classes like AA in Vegas. The VA offered gambling anonymous classes in Las Vegas and I went to a few of those. But it was hard because for one, I was the only female and also I was the youngest too. So sitting in a, a room, you know, surrounded by men and they're all, you know, 40s and up, you know, hi, my name is Brittany and, and I'm addicted to gambling. Trying to have these conversations and sit around and talk to these people, you know, it was just really hard. I, I really didn't have the connection with any of them because a lot of them honestly were already out of it. Like they weren't gambling anymore. They were kind of in that recovery or we didn't get chips or anything, but <laughs> you know, like, oh, I'm six months sober or I'm a year sober type thing. That's the levels that they were on and, and I wasn't on that level. You know, I was still going to the casinos and stuff. So it was just really hard for me to, you know, work with some of the programs that were given to me as an option. And beating, I guess, this gambling addiction was something that I personally had to do on my own. And I'm happy to say that I'm not that person anymore. I don't. Yeah, I'm just not that person anymore because of Domino. <laughs> it may sound weird, but bus life, Domino has helped me kick this gambling addiction. Like really kick it to the curb. <sighs> so I'm not really sure how to phrase it, but Domino has basically helped me kick my gambling addiction because of the constant distraction it is for me. My mind is always, I could be doing more to Domino. Domino may need, you know, new tires in the future or if Domino breaks down in the future, you know, I, I'm always thinking about Domino. So my money to me has a name, basically. Even though in the past, my money already had names. Uh, Bill, my money name was Bill. Card note, rent, <laughs> you know. Um, but for some reason, I still allow gambling to basically destroy my life even though I had a good thing going. So fast forward to me separating from the Air Force. You would think that, you know, that would have kind of turned everything around, like changed my, my cloudy days to sunshine, but it didn't. When I separated from the Air Force, I feel like I lost my identity. I was in the Air Force for 11 years, two months, and 23 days. So right out of high school, up until I think I was 31 when I separated. And that's a long time. That is my young adult life. You know, I went from being told what to do by my parents, to basically being told what to do by, you know, my leadership. And then now that I'm at that time when I separated, I felt like I had no purpose. Like I didn't know, I didn't know me anymore. I didn't know what Brittany liked to do. I didn't know what Brittany liked to wear, what music I liked listening to. I didn't know how I wanted to do my hair. Like 
just simple things that make a person an individual I completely lost that because I had a uniform Monday through Friday I had to put on this mask and be this person that they needed me to be and some people say like well your job is Monday through Friday no I was active duty Air Force 365 seven days a week I'm on duty and you become this person that they want you to become during this time and then when all of that is taken away from you you kind of lose yourself you lose your identity and then you have to kind of scramble and figure out who you were prior to and so I went through a long period <laughs> uh, over a year of depression like I was hardcore depressed I will say that I never had thoughts of harming myself me physically harming myself I never had thoughts of that because of how I was raised my grandparents were pastors and evangelists I grew up a Christian and no matter how many times I turned my back on God or you know my religion I still felt deep felt deep down that you know no matter how much I was hurting um, if I was to kill myself I will ultimately go to hell you know and so thinking about my soul basically is what didn't allow me to go down that path of wanting to self-harm myself however I had many moments of I will say that I had many moments of driving and let's say you're driving on an expressway or a bridge or something and I've had those moments those thoughts like if a car was to swerve into my lane I wouldn't stop you know I wouldn't try and move my car out the way to avoid a car accident you know I've had those thoughts like I would not try and do like self preservation I would allow myself to get hit in a car, you know, to, ha to have a car accident because, you know, if I was to die in a car accident, like it wouldn't be, you know, ultimately my fault. It would be the fault of someone else's. And, you know, if I was to die, I could still go to heaven type thing. So those are, that's how dark, you know, I allowed my thoughts to get. Um, but it was never to the point where I would self-harm, you know? Um, 